live right now. Pittsburgh's best sports show is about to begin. Call us or tweet us. We've got things to talk about on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. All right, Ken, thanks very much. Good evening, everyone, and welcome inside the Fan Cave. This is the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. Bob Pompiani here, Andrew Filipponi there, which is 93.7 The Fan, and we sometimes simulcast this uh, program on 93.7 The Fan. Not tonight, because they have Westwood One football, but we're here talking Wrong. sports with you. No? Wrong. We are on The Fan right now because The Fan had Pitt, North Carolina A&T, oh, okay. and uh, the Monday Night Football game is on our sister station so right we now. Are. So, yes, we are live. How about on that? On the 93.7, the fan airwaves. Yep. Well, that's good to know. And uh, since you brought it up, Pitt won tonight. And how about Bub Carrington? I've seen a lot of Pitt basketball. Uh, and I know you're a basketball uh, aholic, Andrew. Uh, we haven't seen many triple doubles in Pitt Panther history, but Bub Carrington, a, a freshman who comes in here, and he's, he's one of two freshmen that I think Jeff Capel really likes. He goes for a triple double. The last time that happened here was Ricardo Greer. And I, if that takes me back to the Ralph Willer days, when he was the head coach, but yeah. uh, you know they got they got some talent over there at Pitt, and hopefully it'll be something they can build upon. Yeah, it's it's tough to get a gauge tonight. North Carolina A and T was picked last in its league, which is the Colonial, which is a lower end mid major. So they should have blown out this team, and they beat them by 50. So that's what a good team does. You get these by games against really bad teams, and you beat them into oblivion, and that's what they did. And this and this Carrington kid, really, Bob. Uh, for as important as Blake Hinson is because he is their leading uh, scorer and returning scorer, they don't really have any depth at point guard. Uh, they lost Burton. They lost Nellie Cummings. So they need this freshman sensation. Dior Johnson no longer with the right. program. They need this player to really not only be uh, dependable, but to play all the time, to be a 35-minute-a-night guy. And it was a really good first impression uh, there's going to be a lot on his shoulders, and tonight he looked like he he's up for the task. On the other side of town, Duquesne won their opener, a much more difficult game. They beat Cleveland State 79-77. We'll have highlights of both of those coming up, and Penn State also beat Delaware State just uh, to round out those three teams, 79-45. to Big news for the Steelers today is what was expected. Cole Holcomb season is over. And you know, Andrew, this is a situation now where you have a, uh, an inside linebacker who I thought was playing really good football, got better as the year went on. He's gone. Minka Fitzpatrick, not sure, although we'll have Mike Tomlin's press conference here tomorrow at noon on KDK+. Plus. I wonder how long he's going to be gone. Those are your top two tacklers. And I wonder if Mark Robinson is up to that task, or do they go out and they have some guys on their practice squad. What do you think they do there? Well, I think they're going to start with Quan Alexander and Roberts and let those two guys police the middle of the field. Roberts is so good against the run, and you're going to need a guy like that the next two games against Green Bay, who's got quarterback problems and good running backs. And then, of course, against Cleveland, even though Nick Chubb isn't there, they're still a team that is at its best when it runs the ball. So, you know, in these situations, maybe Neal comes down from a safety position and plays in the box a little bit more. Uh, Holcomb was supposed to be their every down back, but I think that Quan Alexander can do a decent enough job at that, Bob. I think for once they have a little bit of depth there. Robinson should do more than special teams and fill in, and he's definitely got the speed to play the position. It's a matter of can he be in the right place at the right time? Can he grasp that as a relatively young linebacker? But uh, this injury, I think, last year would have been devastating. The Quan Alexander insurance policy pickup that they did this summer they're going to have to cash that in big time now, Bob. Right, and they can't afford to have any more injuries in that position over there because there's not, beyond these guys, uh, a lot of an experience. So we'll see how that goes. But what a day yesterday in the NFL to watch the AFC North in action. Baltimore more impressive than any of the teams, although I know Cincinnati is coming on here, uh, Pony. But, you know, Baltimore just absolutely steamrolled a good Detroit team, and they did the same thing yesterday to I thought was a very good Seattle team. And they're doing it by running the football right down the opposition's throat. Lamar uh, Jackson is on an MVP conversation. At least he should be based on his completion percentage. And he's not making mistakes. That team is playing extremely well. And their defense is very good as well. Well, I say bring it on. With That's the one team, even though they've been really good and they've blown out Detroit and Seattle at home, 
Uh, they don't scare me whatsoever. For whatever reason, the Steelers are that team's kryptonite, specifically Lamar Jackson's kryptonite. And they seem to bring out the worst in the Ravens whenever these two teams meet up. So Baltimore has a lot of success against everybody else. And, hey, they only play the Steelers twice a year. But as far as teams that intimidate me, if I've got to play a playoff game in Baltimore, I would much prefer that than, than say, Cincinnati or Kansas City or even Jacksonville when push comes to shove. I love that matchup for the Steelers, even when Baltimore seems to really have a handle on every other team they play on their schedule. And I assume you're saying that because they play the same brand of football. It's a, it's a physical game yeah. that gets down into the trenches much sure than – you know, Cincinnati's a team well, that Jackson can just go Jackson makes those crazy mistakes against the, the Steelers. You said he's been mistake-free, and he has been in large part, but he isn't against the Steelers. Look no further than that right. Joey Porter Jr. interception that turned the tide of that no, game. No, I, I, I get that, but I'm saying generally speaking, he's done a very good job handling that situation this year, and uh, we'll see how it goes from here, but they're 7-2. and two. They're trying to make a bid to be the number one seed in the AFC. we got a lot to get into, and we're over time. We're going to take a break. Open up the phone lines. It's 412-575-2600. This is the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call right here live on KDK Plus. And yes, tonight, 93.7 The Fan, too.